This time we're going to talk about the measurement of body compartments volume and these are the body compartments that we have been talking about in the last videos including the total body water so the whole intracellular extracellular fluids and the plasma or the intravascular fluid the extracellular fluid and so on so we have a method which is called the, the tracer method where a tracer is used it's injected into the fluid and it distributes all over the fluid and then throughout this distribution we can actually know how large is the fluid or what is the volume of the fluid so the volume V will equal a, which is the amount of the tracer, rather a mass, and this is divided by the concentration of the fluid itself. So, for example, if we have a fluid with a concentration of 0 0.04 milligrams per milliliter, and we injected an amount of 200 milligrams of the tracer. So the volume of the fluid will be V will equal 200 divided by 0 0.04 to give us 80,000 milliliters. So this is how it works. So based on the tracer we now know the volume of the fluid. There is another method which is called the dilution method and this is quite simple. We have the first volume of the fluid and its first concentration and this will equal the second volume with the second concentration after adding the tracer or the indicator. So if you want to know V2, V2 will equal V1 C1 divided by C2. But that's just using case that you know what V1 is. Uh, there is also another third method which is quite similar to this one where V1 lambda 1 equals V2 lambda 2 and here we can see from the lambda this is related to radiation so you can add a ra radioactive tracer and then you work out the equation the same way like this one so if you need V2, V2 will equal V1 lambda 1 which is the radiation before adding the tracer, the radioactive tracer and lambda 2 after adding the tracer. So this is how the volume of the body compartments is measured. Now for the substances used in order to measure this volume of the body compartment. For every compartment we should use something which is compatible with this kind of compartment. For example for plasma we can use albumins because they are not permeable to capillary walls and then they can stay inside the plasma, just inside the plasma so that there will be no faults in the measurements. Otherwise they will get outside the plasma and when you trace them inside the compartment maybe you will have a bigger volume than you should have. So for plasma we use albumins because they are not permeable through the capillary walls. For the extracellular fluid we will use something that's permeable through the capillary walls because the plasma is included but it's not permeable for the cell membranes because if it got into the cell membranes 
They will go inside the cells and this is the intracellular compartment, not the extracellular one. So we can use something like sucrose, sodium, inulin, mannitol, and so on. For the total body water, of course it will be anything permeable to all kinds of membranes because this is the whole compartment. We can use titrated water, or deuterium, or so on. Different kinds of water, radioactive or titrated. So, uh, this is how we measure such kinds of uh, volumes for, for these compartments. So, this is called direct measurement. We can measure these compartments directly. We have other compartments like the intracellular fluid can't be measured directly. So what we do is we take this volume and we subtract this from it. Accordingly, we'll get the intracellular fluid because the total body water equals the intracellular plus the extracellular fluid. So this will equal the total body water minus the extracellular fluid. So this is an indirect measurement. Another one is the interstitial fluid. The interstitial fluid works the same way. You take this, the extracellular fluid, and you subtract the plasma volume, which is also called the intravascular fluid, from it, and then accordingly you'll get the interstitial fluid because the extracellular fluid is the plasma plus the interstitial fluid together. So these two are indirect measurements, these three are direct measurements, and that's it for today. I hope it was clear for you, and until the next time, I thank you for watching, and see you.